क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मॉलिक्यूल्स इज प्लेन आर ऑप्शन आर नंबर वन मीथेन नंबर टू बी एफ थ्री नंबर थ्री पी एफ थ्री नंबर फोर अमोनिया एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज टू बी एफ थ्री सी मीथेन मीथेन इज टेट्राहीड्रल इट हैज फोर हाइड्रोजन सराउंडिंग कार्बन एंड दीज फोर हाइड्रोजन आर ऑन द फोर कॉर्नर्स ऑफ टेट्राहीड्रल अमोनिया एंड पी एफ थ्री अमोनिया एंड पी एफ थ्री आर पिरामिडल बिकॉज ऑफ प्रेजेंस ऑफ लोन पेयर ऑन द सेंट्रल आइटम बी एफ थ्री हैज ट्राइगोनल प्लेन आर शेप दिस इज ट्राइगोनल प्लेन आर so the correct answer is second option question number 22 most covalent aluminum halide among them first option alcl3 second option ali3 third option alf3 and fourth option is albr3 in all the cases the cation is common that is aluminum they differ in the nature of anion and the largest anion among them is i minus therefore ali3 is the most covalent so the answer is ali3 al I three is most covalent due to large size of I minus. I minus has very large size, largest among all the halides, and therefore its polarizability is high and covalent nature is high. Answer is second option. Question number twenty three. The low solubility of barium sulfate in water is due to first option. low dissociation energy 2 ionic bonds 3 high value of lattice energy 4 covalent bonds and the correct answer is high value of lattice energy uh, due to large size of ba2 plus it is it efficiently stabilizes large anion sulfate remember this statement a large cation large cation efficiently efficiently stabilizes large anion sulfate is a very large anion and therefore it can be efficiently stabilized by a large cation like ba2 plus answer is third option high value of lattice energy that makes it less soluble in water question number 24 a diatomic molecule has a dipole moment 1.2 dB mu equals to 1.2 dB if the bond distance is one angstrom so bond length L equals to one angstrom. What percentage of electronic charge exists on each atom? You are asked to find out percentage charge. Percentage charge is equal to mu observed by mu theoretical into hundred. This is equal to one point two. Divided by 4.8 into 1. This gives you mu theoretical. It is the full charge of electron in ESU. 4.8 into 10 raised to minus 10. Uh, see, this is 1 into 10 raised to minus 8. So 10 raised to minus 18 is nothing but d by. So we have neglected it. I mean, that gets cancelled off into 100. So this comes to 25 percent. So the answer is third option. Question number twenty-five. Which one of the following cannot exist on the basis of molecular orbital theory? First option C two, second option H e two plus, third option H two plus, and fourth option is H e two. According to molecular orbital theory, any species which has zero bond order is not expected to exist. If you see H e two, it has, uh, it has. Four electrons, so you can write it as sigma one s two, sigma star one s two. So bond order is equal to number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus number of electrons in anti-bonding molecular orbital divided by two. So this comes to zero because bond order is zero. Therefore, H two is not expected to exist according to molecular orbital theory. answer is fourth option question number 
which one of the following has more tendency to form covalent compounds? First option barium, second option beryllium, third option is Mg, fourth option is calcium. The correct answer is beryllium. Beryllium has more tendency to form covalent compounds due to uh, very high charge density of Be2+. It has very high polarizing power. Because of very high polarizing power, its compounds are predominantly covalent. So, answer is second option. Question number 27. Increasing order of size of the various hybrid orbitals is? Size is proportional to percentage p character or I can say size is inversely proportional to percentage s character. As percentage s character increases, size decreases. So, highest percentage of s character is present in sp, then sp2, then sp3. So, the order of size is sp less than sp2 less than sp3. This has 50 percent s, this has 25 percent s character. So, the correct answer is first option. Question number 28, which one of the following possesses maximum hydration energy? First option MgSO4, second option CaSO4, third option is SrSO4 and fourth option is BSO4. If you observe these compounds, you realize that all of them have common anion that is sulphate. So, we decide on the basis of nature of cation. Uh, among them, the smallest is Mg2 plus because of very small size of Mg2 plus, its hydration energy is very high. Mg2 plus has is the smallest, it has highest charge density, highest charge density, therefore, high heat of hydration, highest heat of hydration. So, answer is first option MgSO4. In vinyl acetylene, type of overlapping in C2 and C3 bond is? Let us look at vinyl acetylene H C triple bond C C H double bond C H 2. As per IPAC system, the numbering has to be done from double bond side because double bond and triple bond are appearing at equal distance from opposite ends. So, priority is given to the double bond in presence of triple bond. So, numbering should be like this. If numbering is like this, then what is the hybridization of this? This is sp2 and this is sp. So, c2 c3 overlap is sigma sp2 sp. So, answer is first option sp2 orbital of second carbon and sp orbital of third carbon. So, answer is first option. The question is the order of dipole movement in the following molecules is uh, look at the compounds given. The first compound given is nitrophenol. This is a polar molecule OH group and NO2 group reinforce each other because they are complementary in that OH is a plus M group and NO2 is a minus M group. So, the release due to OH is reinforced by the withdrawal due to NO2 group. So, this is expected to be most polar and then look at this case. This is the third one. This is the releasing group. It is a plus I group. This is a minus I group. So, the release due to this is reinforced by the withdrawal of C L. So, this is next to this. Then comes the second one ortho dichlorobenzene. Both are minus I groups and uh, we take the resultant as 2 mu cos theta by 2. This will give resultant of the two chlorines. So, that actually they cannot reinforce each other. No doubt this is also a polar molecule, but these two groups cannot reinforce each other unlike these two cases where reinforcement is there. So, the order of dipole movement will be first this one, then this, then this. So, the correct answer is fourth option 2 less than uh, 3 less than 1. 1 is the most polar. Answer is fourth option. Question number 31. In which of the following carbon carbon single bond length is shortest? The first option is CH3 CHO. It is a case of sigma 
is P3, is P2. The next example is CHO single bond CHO. It is sigma SP2, SP2. Third case is CHO, CN. It is sigma SP2, SP. And uh, fourth case is CH3, CN. It is the case of sigma SP3, SP. Now, this has least uh, p character if you compare. So, the size of carbon will be shortest, uh, smallest I can say the bond length will be shortest. So, the correct answer is third option we decide on the basis of percentage p character of overlapping orbitals. As the p character increases bond length increases. Question number 32, the BF bond distance in ammonia boron trifluoride adduct is dash than in BF3. If you compare BF3 boron trifluoride one of the lone pairs of one of the fluorines is back donated to the boron and this gets delocalized uh, among the three bonds. So, the bond order will be 1.33 due to increase in bond order the bond length will decrease, but look at ammonia boron trifluoride molecule. This is ammonia boron trifluoride adduct. Now, the vacant orbital of boron is accepting lone pair from nitrogen. So, there cannot be back bonding from fluorine. So, this bond order will be pakka, it will be exactly 1. So, this bond order is higher than this. So, this is shorter and this is longer. So, uh, look at the options number 1 shorter, number 2 equal, number 3 longer, number 4 double. The answer is longer. It is longer in this case than in this case. Answer is third option. Question number 33, the xenon compound that has square planar structure having two lone pairs of electrons is first option xenon trioxide, second option xenon difluoride, third option xenon tetrafluoride, fourth option is xenon oxytetrafluoride. Let us see. This is xenon trioxide, it has one lone pair only. Xenon difluoride is linear molecule and it has three lone pairs and two bond pairs. So, this is not the answer. Xenon tetrafluoride has four bond pairs. After forming four bonds, xenon still has two uh, lone pairs, I mean two four electrons and those are present as two lone pairs, one above and one below. So, this is the correct answer. We will see xenon oxidator fluoride also, it has a square pyramid shape with one lone pair. So, the answer is third option. Question number 34, using Vesper theory, the number of lone pairs in PCL5, IF5, SOF4 and XCO4 are See, we need to find out number of lone pairs present on the central atom in each case. In PCL5, no lone pairs because phosphorus has 5, phosphorus belongs to fifth group, it has 5 valence electrons, all of them are involved in bonding. IF5, iodine belongs to seventh group, it has got 7 valence electrons, 5 are involved in bonding, it has 2 electrons which are non bonded, those are present as 1 lone pair. SOF4, sulfur has 6 valence electrons, it will use 4 electrons for forming bonds with 4 fluorines and 2 electrons for bombing at forming a double bond with oxygen. So, there are no lone pairs. I will repeat, sulfur has 6 valence electrons because it is a member of 6th group. It will use 4 electrons to form bonds with 4 fluorines, 2 electrons to form a double bond with oxygen and XCOF4. Xenon has 8 valence electrons, it will use 4 of them to form bonds with fluorines, 2 for oxygen and then 2 electrons are left out on xenon that will exist as one lone pair. So, the answer is 0101. So, the correct answer is first option. 
Question number 35. The paramagnetism of O2 molecule is due to the presence of two electrons with parallel spin n. First option bonding pi orbitals, second option antibonding pi orbitals, third option bonding sigma orbitals and fourth option is antibonding sigma orbitals. The correct answer is antibonding pi orbitals. The last two electrons of oxygen go into pi star 2 p x and pi star 2 p y. These are the unpaired electrons and are responsible for uh, paramagnetic nature of oxygen. Answer is second option. Question number 36. The hybrid orbitals used by chlorine in forming CLF3 are of the type. First option sp3, second option sp2, third option sp2d and fourth option is sp3d. The correct answer is fourth option sp3d. You can see CLF3 after forming three bonds with three fluorines, chlorine still has four valence electrons because altogether chlorine has seven valence electrons. After forming three bonds, it is still having uh, four electrons. Those are appearing as two lone pairs. So, you have two lone pairs and three bond pairs. So, five electron pairs are there. So, hybridization must be sp3d. So, the correct answer is fourth option sp3d hybridization. Question number 37. In which one of the given change bond angle at central atom is not changed? Let us see. AlCl3 becoming AlCl4 minus. This is sp2, this is sp3. So, definitely there will be change in the bond angle. CH4 becoming CH3 plus bond the hybridization changes from sp3 to sp2. So, definitely there will be change in the bond angle CH3 minus to CH4. It has got uh, three bond pairs, one lone pair and this has got four bond pairs. So, definitely there will be uh, there will be change in bond angle because lone pair causes more repulsion on bond pairs. Then you have one more uh, change that is CH4. When it is changing to CF4, uh, both are symmetrical molecules with sp3 hybridization. You expect the bond angle to be 109 degrees 28 minutes in CH4. Uh, same as the case with CF4, it also will have all the bonds identical. So, bond angle will be 109 degrees 28 minutes. So, there is no change in bond angle when methane changes to CF4. So, answer is fourth option. Question number 38, which one of the following order is correct for dipole moment? The order is like this CH3 Cl greater than CH3 F greater than CH3 Br greater than CH3 I. This is given in fourth option. So, fourth option is the correct answer. Uh, actually, you will readily agree for this order except for excepting for this you will readily agree for this order on the basis of difference in electronegativity. As you go from chlorine to bromine, bromine to iodine, electronegativity decreases therefore, dipole moment should decrease that is ok. Then why this is less than this? Uh, it is because of extremely small size, not just small size, it is extremely small in size and we know that dipole moment depends upon charge and distance between the charges. So, uh, the C f bond distance will be very short that is the reason why its dipole moment is less than methyl chloride. That is the reason for anomaly. The reason is extremely small size of fluorine. Answer is fourth option. Question number 39. The octet rule is not obeyed in A C O 2, B B C L 3, C P C L 3, D S F 4 and let us see what is the correct answer. C O 2 it has four bond pairs actually carbon is surrounded by four bond pairs. So, it obeys octet rule. BCL 3, there are only three bond pairs. So, uh, six electrons, six electrons only it does not obey octet rule. Then you have PCL 3, phosphorus has got three bond pairs and one lone pair. So, octet is obeyed and then SF 4. SF 4 has four bond pairs and one lone pair. Uh, so, it has uh, five electron pairs. So, you can say 10 electrons 
therefore, octet is not obeyed. So, answer is second option B and D, second option. Question number 40, the molecules which show hydrogen bonding are A, ortho nitrophenol, B, water, C, HCl and D, ethyl acetoacetate. I will write all the structures, then you realize this is I am going to draw ortho nitrophenol. This is partially positive, this is partially negative and you can have intramolecular hydrogen bond like this. Water, you have partially positive hydrogen, partially negative oxygen. So, you can have hydrogen bonding between water molecules you know very well. This is how hydrogen bond forms. HCl, no hydrogen bond. The reason is due to large size of chlorine, the electron density on chlorine will be less. Let us see ethyl acetoacetate. This is ethyl acetoacetate. When it goes to enol form, then it will form this. This is the eno enol form of ethyl acetoacetate and there can be hydrogen bonding involving partially positive hydrogen and partially negative oxygen. This type of hydrogen bond is possible in the enol form. So, the correct answer is fourth option A, B and D. These molecules have hydrogen bond. Question number 41, the compounds which contain ionic covalent and coordinate covalent bonds are A sulfuric acid, B ammonium chloride, C K 3 FeCN 6 and D calcium carbide. The correct answer is option 1 that is B and C. In B and C you find both uh, I mean all the three types of bonds ionic covalent as well as coordinate covalent bond. Let us see this is ammonium chloride. In ammonium chloride uh, you have nitrogens surrounded by four hydrogens ammonium. In this you have two types of bonds, so, this is covalent, this is coordinate covalent bond, dative bond and then the attraction between this N and this H is covalent, this is coordinate covalent and the attraction between these two species is ionic. So, all the three types of bonds are there. Look at K 3 Fe C N 6. It consists of 3 K plus, this is the molecule. The attraction between potassium and this complex species is ionic. The attraction between carbon and nitrogen is covalent and the bond between cyanide and Fe is coordinate covalent. You will have something like this Fe surrounded by 6 cyanide ions from to form dative bond. Now, between carbon and nitrogen you can have a triple bond like this. So, this is covalent bond, this is dative bond and then this is attracted to three potassiums through ionic bond. So, you have all the three types of bonds. So, the correct answer is first option B and C. Question number 42, which of the following molecules involve intramolecular hydrogen bond? First option ethanol, second option chloral hydrate, third option is paranitrophenol and fourth option is acetic acid. The correct answer is second option chloral hydrate. Chloral hydrate has uh, intramolecular hydrogen bond. This is one way of writing chloral hydrate. You can as well indicate it like this. This is hydrated form of chloride. This has intramolecular hydrogen bond. So, the answer is second option chloral hydrate has intramolecular hydrogen bond. Question number 43 assertion is para dimethoxybenzene has a dipole movement while para dichlorobenzene has no dipole movement. Reason methoxy group is electron releasing group and uh, chlorine is electron withdrawing group. This is para dichlorobenzene. 
the withdrawal due to this is cancelled out by withdrawal due to this you know dipole moment is a um, vector quantity and if you see para dimethoxybenzene see in this case all the atoms lie in the same plane and therefore there is a perfect cancellation of dipoles whereas in para dimethoxybenzene there can be free rotation of this and this OCH3 bond can go out of the plane also and uh, that is responsible for polarity in the molecule. So, this is polar and this is non-polar. So, the correct answer is first option. Question number 44 assertion FeCl3 is more covalent than FeCl2. This is true as the charge increases uh, covalent nature increases. Greater the charge on the cation, greater is the covalent character of the compound form. This is true according to Fajan's rules as the charge on the cation increases its polarizing power increases therefore, covalent nature increases answer is first option only. Question number 45 ortho nitrophenol is more volatile than para nitrophenol reason ortho nitrophenol has intermolecular hydrogen bond whereas, para nitrophenol has intramolecular hydrogen bond this is not true actually ortho has intramolecular hydrogen bond this is ortho nitrophenol ortho nitrophenol has intramolecular hydrogen bond whereas, para has intermolecular hydrogen bond. So, the correct answer is third option A is true that is statement 1 is true, but R is not true R is incorrect statement. Question number 46 the assertion is beryllium chloride and xenon difluoride are isostructural this is correct both are isostructural both are linear. You can see this is B C L 2 linear molecule and X C F 2 is also a linear molecule reason both have same hybridization this is not true actually uh, xenon difluoride has three lone pairs on xenon. So, hybridization is sp 3 d here the hybridization of beryllium is sp. So, the correct answer is third option a is true, but r is not true question number 47 it is a match the following type of question you can see in the list 1 the some compounds are given and their properties are given in list 2 F a option so 2 C L 2. If you draw the structure of SO2 Cl2, you realize that it is a tetrahedral molecule. So, A should be matched with uh, A should be matched with uh, 4 that is tetrahedral and then uh, the B is HF it exhibits hydrogen bonding. There can be hydrogen bonding between HF molecules because of large difference in the electronegativity of H and F. Uh, so, B should be matched with 3 then uh, C K 2 H G I 4 this is Nessler's reagent this is Nessler's reagent it is used for testing ammonia it is used for testing ammonia as well as ammonium salt. So, it should be matched with second option then finally, N O NO has odd number of electrons 7 from nitrogen 8 from oxygen it has got odd number of electrons. So, it is paramagnetic So, D should be matched with uh, 1. So, the correct answer is third option question number 48 some species ions are given on the uh, left hand side that is list column 1 in the column 2 their properties are given O 2 time 2 minus this is peroxide. So, it is diamagnetic and its bond order is 1. So, A should be matched with uh, 1 and 4 A is matched with 1 and 4. Now, C B O 2 plus O 2 plus has one unpaired electron because O 2 has two unpaired electrons O 2 plus should have only one unpaired electron you get O 2 plus by losing one electron from O 2 right. So, one electron one unpaired electron has gone one electron pair is still there then this will be paramagnetic and bond order will be 1.5 bond order will be 2.5 not 1.5 because you are removing electron from the anti bonding molecular orbital. So, bond order will become 
So, this should be matched with uh, 2 and 3, this should be matched with 2 and 3. C n 2 plus n 2 plus you know n 2 has bond order 3. So, n 2 plus will have bond order 2.5 and this also will be paramagnetic. So, even this should be matched with 2 and 3 d n 2 minus n 2 minus should be paramagnetic and bond order should be 2.5 because n 2 has a bond order 3 after the gain of uh, one electron uh, that electron will go into anti bonding molecular orbital. So, bond order decreases it decreases by half unit. So, it will be uh, becoming 2.5. So, the correct answer is third option. Question number 49 in the list 1 some compounds are given and their property their structures are given in the list 2 let us find out N 2 O. N 2 O has a linear structure like this or like this, it is a linear structure. So, it should be matched with 4, A should be matched with 4, B F 2 O. F 2 O is angular, central atom is oxygen, it is angular. So, angular or bent shape, so it should be matched with 5 and then B F 4 minus, it is tetrahedral, B F 4 minus is tetrahedral. So, B F 4 minus is matched with the uh, second option then C H 3 plus, it is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Therefore, correct answer is first option. Question number 50, some ionic species are given in the list 1 and you have to match with their hybridization given in the list 2. We have I 3 plus, I 3 minus, I C L 4 minus, X C F 6. Let us do. Let us apply this formula P equals to half into V, V is 7 because iodine is a central atom, it has 7 valence electrons plus 2 surrounding monovalent atoms iodine minus 1. This comes to P equals to uh, 4. So, it should be sp 3. Next is I 3 minus P equals to half into 7 plus 2 plus 1 because this has got a negative charge that should be added. So, P equals to 5 corresponds to sp 3 d hybridization and then comes I C L 4 minus. Seven plus four plus one. So P equals to six corresponds to sp 3 d 2 hybridization and the last one is X C F 6 p equals to half into 8 plus 6. So, p equals to 7 corresponds to sp 3 d 3 hybridization. So, the correct answer is second option.